Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good morning, everyone. Phil Finarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're having a great start to your Tuesday. Well, 90 years ago, to this day, the Lone Ranger radio program officially was released. Uh, hard to believe that it's been 90 years, all the way back in 1934. Since then, we've had television shows, movies made about it. It's kind of become pretty synonymous with Westerns, and a lot of people, you know, you hear the term Lone Ranger, sparks times to either seeing the movie that came out a couple years ago or watching that TV show, maybe even listening to that radio broadcast. But did you know that it actually has ties? to the state of Michigan. Well, that's exactly what we found out in Matt Jarowski's latest Sunday story, and he joins us now to talk all about it. Matt, thank you so much for stopping by. Always, Phil. Thank you. And uh, just kind of talking about the history of it, I mean, how, how did you even decide that this was a story that needed to be told? I mean, how did you find out that there were ties to this uh, legendary radio program turned TV show turned movie uh, right, right here in the state of Michigan? Uh, this nugget I actually unearthed a while ago. I was doing uh, research on the Golden Age of Radio. Uh, and uh, the date stuck out to me, and I knew the 90th anniversary was coming up, so I kind of uh, put that away in my, in my planner and, and uh, revisited it now that we're here on the actual day. Uh, it's one of those things where it's a really interesting story to tell. Um, obviously dealing with WXYZ, which was the station in Detroit that actually produced the show, just kind of diving into that entire era of radio, of producing enter entertainment shows, which is something that we don't see anymore on radio. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the golden age of radio, this being one of those big time shows that yeah. really got a lot of play, a lot of attention, so much so that as I've mentioned multiple times already that it did get turned and kind of remade for TV and oh, yeah. for the big screen and everything like that. Um, but when you think of Westerns, Michigan probably doesn't really right. uh, come to mind as a place that really, it was that hotbed and really started discovering it. Talk about how they made it work. How was Michigan really a part of creating this Western atmosphere in this radio program? Right, so I mean, it's one of those things where, like you mentioned, the Lone Ranger kind of really is, I mean, the Western is still, in some ways, a Hollywood staple. Uh, it's not as popular as it was, you know, decades past, but right. it's very much still a thing, and the Lone Ranger has a lot to do with that. Uh, so, th really, the story goes, the show uh, comes from uh, George Trendle and the team that he hired at WXYZ. Uh, he bought the station in the late 20s. Uh, the year before, so 1932, the station was originally a CBS affiliate. Trendle, who is kind of known as a pretty frugal guy, uh, while this isn't outright said, that, that kind of seems to be a lot of what took place there. He wanted to save money, and so he left CBS and wanted to focus more on producing their own shows. So he hired a new drama director, and he hired another guy named Franz Stryker to help write all this material, and that's where The Lone Ranger comes from. Uh, so. June, uh, January 30th, 1933 is when the first show broadcasts. Instead of airing on CBS station, it's going to air on WXYZ, and they put together a group of Michigan radio affiliates. So there's eight total, and that included Wood Radio here in Grand Rapids, KZO in Kalamazoo. So those are the, only the eight stations in the world that actually heard the first broadcast of the Long Ranger. Mm -hmm. And that is a pretty cool tidbit right there. And the story itself, I want to remind everybody that it is available to you right now over on woodtv.com. Our Facebook audience can find a link to it right now in the description box or the comment section. But the story, the full story, really just goes through every little twist and turn of this radio program, how they got it up on air, how Michigan became a great part of it. Highly encourage everybody to check it out. But there were a lot of challenges kind of associated with making it, kind of keeping it up to date and all of that. I'll kind of talk about just some of those because I found that to be one of the more interesting aspects of this whole story. Sure, I mean, there's a lot to it. I feel like it's one of those things where the story changes as the years go by, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but every generation really has their own. I know you mentioned the, the latest Disney remake, which I think was like 2014. Mm -hmm. and like Johnny Depp and Arnie Hammer were kind of the two big stars there. So even, I mean, you're talking three or four generations removed from the original entity. Kind of have their own story in some way. Um, I just, I, I found the whole thing to be really interesting, especially how they finally landed on the voice of the Lone Ranger. It took them a while to get there. Um, and, and we kind of go through this in the story. Uh, the first actor, he has the job for a few months before he leaves and decides he wants to go make it big in Hollywood. 
uh, he actually he starts writing and performing or directing under the name George Seaton, and he actually had an illustrious career. He won a couple of Oscars for directing and writing screenplays, so so good for him. <laughs> uh, so after he left, the radio producers were kind of left in the lurch a little bit. Uh, they hired one guy who did the show once, and for day two performances, he showed up to work drunk and was, fi- was fired on the spot. And uh, James Jewett, the guy who was like kind of the, the drama director at XYZ, voiced the character for a little bit until they found the voice, and did Earl Gracer. Um, he held it for about eight years, and he, he really brought the voice. It was kind of uh, the person behind the Ranger when this, the show itself really exploded. So within a year, um, Lone Ranger is pretty much national. XYZ launches their own network with a station out of New York, a station out of Cincinnati, and then WGN in Chicago to really carry that, um, to carry the show uh, much, much further than its original footprint. Um, interestingly enough, uh, XYZ left that network in 1935, but they were still contractually obligated to provide the Lone Ranger show for these other stations. So there were several years on air where XYZ was still producing the show, Mm -hmm. but it was airing on a station out of Windsor, Ontario, and not out of XYZ. So I I found that to be a pretty interesting wrinkle of that whole generation, too. Right now, it just really speaks to how popular the show became, that they needed it to kind of broadcast it to the rest of the country. Matt, kind of wrapping up, you know, your stories, we love reading them. We love having you on the live desk to talk about Mm -hmm. them because there is a lot that goes into each one of these stories. But this one in particular, I mean, how cool was it to really take a step back into history, as you mentioned, researching the golden age of radio and really just learning about that time period and also just being able to tie it back to, you know, our own roots right here in Michigan. Right, and it ties to our roots here in TV as well. It kind of mm-hmm. feels that way. Obviously, months ago I did the Buster Keaton feature, which talked about how vaudeville and how that was kind of one of the, the dominating entertainment platforms for its era, kind of towards the turn of the century. And then the golden age of radio, where radio fills that gap. And then we get into the golden age of TV. And even talking to, I mean, my dad, who grew up here in Grand Rapids, has stories of going on local TV shows. WZZM had... Uh, their version of Bozo and Wood TV had Buck Matthews show here. So even just, you know, that's one generation removed from where from where I am. So to see how we've moved from radio into TV and then enter, into the, you know, the, the network age where local TV stations aren't producing entertainment uh, material as much anymore. But it, it's a fascinating way to look through history and see how that story evolved with it. Mm-hmm, absolutely. It is very interesting and also... What is interesting is Matt's latest Sunday story, which you can find right now over on our website, woodtv.com, and it delves right into all the roots related to Michigan and, of course, the Lone Ranger. Matt, thank you so much for stopping by the live desk today. We really do appreciate it. Anytime. Thank you. I want to thank everybody else for tuning in to this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.